and make it like this. Okay, so let me write that bigger. Now, that's a kind of a weird force, isn't it? The, y compo the x component of the force depends on the y position of the particle. And the y component of the force depends on the x position of the particle. Can, there, can such a force exist? Yeah, I mean, it's hard for me and you to do that because we would have to keep thinking as the x as the x gets bigger, the y component of the force is going to get larger, right? And the x component of the force is going to get larger as the y gets bigger. So in other, a person couldn't do that equation and actually replicate that. But a machine could. You could have like a, put this information into the machine and say, drag this object across this line with this force. I don't know if they ever made a machine like that, but you could do that. And the machine would continually be calculating the x position of the particle and the y position, and then it would readjust the force every, every uh, second, right? So it would be kind of a weird force because its x component could be, would be dependent on the y position. I could even make a crazy kind of force 2y x i hat minus 3x squared j hat. I could make any kind of machine, put the program in there for the machine and say, I want the x component of the force to be this weird function. Now, machine, go ahead and do it. Okay? And then the y, y component. Now, what, how much work will it do on that object? So let's, let's do this one a little, a little harder. So how would be the integral here? It would, we would start the same way. We would have 2yx here. And then here we would have 3x squared. And then we would end up with Okay, we would end up with that case, 2yx dx minus integral 3x squared dy. Well, at this point, it becomes a non-conservative force because you have to put in the path of the particle. I cannot integrate that. So this force is called the path dependent, path dependent, the work done by this force, the work is path dependent, so therefore the force is non-conservative. So the work done by this force is path dependent and the force is non-conservative. So how would we get the answer? Well, we would have to put what is the relationship between the y and the x? Well, if it's a straight line, and again, I'm assuming gravity is not in the plane of the board. But if the gravity was in the plane of the board, gravity wouldn't care about the uh, x. And gravity would also not care about the path taken. The only thing gravity would care about is the 5. You see? So now, what would be the equation of the line? Uh, well, the slope of the line is 15 over uh, 5 over 15, 1 third x, right? Right? So you are forced to put the equation of the line over there. So I can put here y equals 1 third x. And then it becomes one third x squared dx. 
Now you can integrate it from 0 to 15. Then over here, what you can do is you can either say x equals 3y, or you can say dy is equal to 1 third dx. Either way, you should get the right answer. Which one is easier? x equals 3y is easier? No, but then you have to square that. Uh, it's easier in this case to do dy is uh, usually when there's an easier way to do it, I take the easier path, man. I'm lazy like that, you know? So dy is one third dx, so that's actually easier in this case. But for uh, you, when you go home or whenever, try doing it in terms of the y, get the same, see if you can get the same answer. 3, 3, this one also cancels. So you can actually combine this, 2 thirds x squared minus x squared. And after that, it's just simply an integral uh, question, right? Uh, 2 thirds x squared minus x squared, that's uh, negative 1 third x squared. Ooh, that means it's more negative this time. The work is more negative. Negative 1 over 9, 15 cubed. So that means the object is, it has to have an initial velocity if you're going to drag it. Otherwise, it's, it won't even go. Um, let's see. You see, because the x squared here, huge, big, huge negative. You see, so the total work ended up being uh, negative. And if you put any other function, let's say you put another function between this and this. Let's say that's a quadratic function. And you do the integral. Is it going to come out the same or different? It's going to be different. Okay? What other function goes through those two points? y equals uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. Do this for when you go home or if you go to, whenever you go to the library or something. Set up an equation for a function that goes through 0, 0, 15, 5. Let's say a quadratic function. So solve for a, b, c. When x is 0, y needs to be 0. Well, C needs to be 0, therefore, right? And then put X is, can't be solved? Then you can, uh, you know what? Set B equal to 0. Because all I want to do is just come up with one other possibility. So set B equal to 0, then put here uh, 5, 15, and then A equals uh, 1 over 225, no, 5 over 225, ooh, 1 over what, 45. So the function y of x is equal to 1 over 45 x squared goes through those two points. It's not going to go down though, it's going to go like this. Okay, so now, redo this integral for that path and show that the answer you get is different. That proves that it's path dependent. You see, the work that it does is path dependent. So show, show it and do it and uh, tell me what answer you get. Okay, good. Have a good break.